All right, let's get into it. Let's learn how to debate with our boy Shappy, our boy Chaparro. Why I drink mushrooms every morning. I used to drink a lot of coffee. And I got honest with myself. Coffee often made me Why is it that whenever people make these kinds of videos, they look weird? So here's a question I get a lot. As someone who often finds myself in political debate, what are some tips I have to help effectively get your points across when you find yourself in such a situation? So here are eight tips for how to approach a debate. Number one. Gotta... Ben Shapiro, you don't find yourself in political debate. You actively go out and seek college students that are fresh out of high school who have no lived experience that you feel like you can dunk on that's what you do you don't you don't find yourself in debate don't don't lie don't lie these people lie to themselves so much dude decide whether the debate is worth it in the first place Okay, this is true. This is actually true. This is very true. So the thing is, Ben Shapiro is probably actually going to say some like good points in this video. The thing is, they probably won't actually apply to him. But like, yeah, decide whether the debate is worth it. Ben Shapiro thinks it's worth it, apparently, to debate college school, college, uh, uh, college school. Wow, I am so tired. They Ben Shapiro thinks it's worth it, apparently, to debate college kids into corners very weirdly and kind of like a creepo and, and you know, just say far right talking points that don't really mean anything. You know what I mean? Like, but like, I, I, as someone who debates, like, I, this, this is true. You have to, you have to figure, you have to uh, decide whether or not the debate or debate that you're about to have is like actually worth it. You know what I mean? So this is something very few people do when you're on Facebook. Like, in a way, you have to make sure that like. The person who you're debating is coming in good faith and, you know, and nine times out of ten when you're debating someone from the right, typically they're not coming in good faith. They just want to yell at you, waste your time, spew neo-Nazi talking points, all that shit. And then, until, and then when you block them, say, look at you, you're a triggered lib. When you're on Twitter, when you're with your friends, very often somebody launches into some sort of disquisition on a subject and they have no idea what they're talking about, and you jump right in because it's time to fight. Well, the problem is that you may be wasting your time. And on your deathbed, you're going to think back, did I really need to waste 45 minutes discussing whether a man can be a woman with this crazy person? You cut that out now, or you'll go home in an ambulance. Oh, my God. You said, do I really need to be discussing why a man... Can't be a woman. The answer is probably not. When it comes to debate, there are really only a few reasons why you want to be in a debate in the first place. Was this made? Oh no, this was Ben. This wasn't the other video. This this is from Ben Shapiro. So like, he showed the video. He showed the clip of him of of, of Caitlyn Jenner putting the fear of God into Ben Shapiro. And Ben Shapiro is still going to think that trans people are, like, inferior to him. <laughs> like, you, Caitlyn Jenner, of all people, Caitlyn Jenner, and I'm not saying it because she's trans, I'm saying it because it's Caitlyn fucking Jenner, but Caitlyn Jenner, of all people, put the fear of God in Ben Shapiro, and he's, the, and he thinks that, like, they're, the, they're in the wrong. He thinks that they're inferior to him. Unreal. Unreal. Unreal, yo. Just completely fucking unreal. Well, the first is, it's an actual discussion, not a debate, and it's designed in order so that you can actually convince someone or they can convince you. It's sort of a No, there's a difference between a debate and, and a discussion. A discussion typically, first off, discussions, people are more likely to engage, with, engage in discussions than they are debates. People are more likely to listen, in many cases, I feel like, to discussion than debates and are more likely to chime in on discussions that I at least I feel uh than debates. The thing about debates is that debates are aggressive discussions, I feel like. They are like I said, it's just to get a dunk on people. It's just to get a dunk on your opponent. It's not actually to have any sort of like good like worthwhile conversation. It's just to get a dunk on your opponent, which is why I I've stated when I sent my when I sent my panel invites to lefty women to, to try to platform lefty women and shit like that. I made sure to tell them like we will be discussing things. This wouldn't be a debate thing. We would be discussing. We'd be putting our heads together to find 
better alternatives, better ways in which we can navigate situations and progress society. I made, I, I made it clear, I think, in these messages, or I meant to, in these messages, that these are, this is not like, a debate panel like any of the panels on my on my on my stream that i'll have in the future are not going to be debate panels they're just going to be discussion channels there is a difference believe me open discussion that is taking place between two open-minded people another reason is because you're attempting to convince people who are in the audience so it really is more about knocking the opponent's arguments out again ironic another th another ironic thing coming from ben shapiro saying that um, it's from two open-minded people, whereas him and his side, their entire point, their entire thing is about being closed-minded. And they say that the left, when the left, when we don't want to engage with these people, they say we're the closed-minded ones. You, you, you hear that, folks? You're closed-minded for not wanting to engage with the transphobe. You're closed-minded for not wanting to talk to Ben fucking Shapiro. To, to, when you're you're closed-minded when you don't want to talk to a fucking neo-Nazi. That's how these people think. These people think, uh, uh, these people think that they are that 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 uh, that you, that you're that you lefties, that you lefties are the closed-minded ones and not them, not the ones who are actively refusing to look at the other side, absolutely refusing to open their minds up to new and I mean yeah to new and upcoming. Or progressive ideas and talking points. Well, not necessarily talking points, but you know what I mean. Progressive ideas. Progressive ideas. Things that are um, things that are different from the norm. As soon as you start talking about anything that's different from or sway that's different or sways from the norm, people like Ben Shapiro plug their ears and go la 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 la. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. La 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 la. Dude, don't 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 kid yourself, Ben Shapiro. I hate Ben shit, Piro. True, true. And making sure that the audience understands that the, the worst type of debate is debate where there is no audience and the person has no chance of being convinced and you already know what you think, then you're just wasting your time. Also, wait, didn't he say that, like, the whole point was, like, to knock over the other person's, like, argument? Audience understands that the, the worst type of debate is debate where there is no audience and the person designed in order to... So you can actually convince someone or they can convince you. It's sort of an open discussion that is taking place between two open-minded people. Another reason is because you're attempting to convince people who are in the audience. So it really is more about knocking the opponent's arguments out and making sure that the audience understand. When I have a discussion with somebody, like when I'm having a conversation about maybe, I don't know, sorry, stuff like which magic card is the best magic card, or some shit. I'm not trying to knock my friend off. We're just fucking bantering and having a good time talking about magic cards. Like, tonight, at the shop that I was at tonight, me and my buddies, we were having a grand old time talking about cards and shit. Like, you just, you, you, we were just talking. We were just having fun. Nobody was like, my argument's better, my deck is better, my card is better. It was just, let's just have fun and talk and play about, play, play some magic. Play, play about some magic. Talk and play some magic, you know? And talk about cards and shit. Like, I, when I'm in a discussion, I'm not trying to act, I'm not actively trying to push the other person off. And that. The, the worst type of debate is debate where there is no audience and the person has no chance of being convinced and you already know what you think, then you're just wasting your time. So just like... Oh. So again, debating is just about dunking. It's not about actually, like, having any sort of constructive conversation. It's about dunking. It's like what nobody said earlier on in the, um... in the, in the, uh, in the, in the chat. He said that it's about, you know, cheering on your side. Literally it. Let's All stop in life fooling ourselves. Members, and then move from there. Number two, you got to know your opponent. So I have a long history of debating. And when I debate, typically I do an awful lot of research on the person I'm debating. That doesn't mean I try and dig up like all sorts of dirt on them. It means that I look up the way that they argue. What? No, you are Ben Shapiro. You are. Don't lie to us. You're looking up that sweet, juicy dirt, Ben Shapiro. But I do agree with this. 
You do need to know about your opponent. Oh, you do need to know your opponent, though. You do. You do. You do. He, like I said, he's probably going to give some good ideas and some good advice or, like, good, at least, you know, talking points. But that's as far as it's going to go. It's not going to be anything that, like, can apply to him or things that he abides by. Largely. What are the arguments that they are frequently using? What are the studies they tend to cite? Exactly how do they argue? What sort of tactics do they tend to use? There are situations where I've really researched somebody down to the nitty gritty. I almost always do that. And then there are situations where, despite your best efforts, you get caught. Wait. Don't you nine times out of ten just go to college campuses, say get on a, get on a pulpit, say a bunch of, like, neo-Nazi conservative bullshit, and then invite somebody, some kid in the audience to come up and debate you? Do you know, d d does Ben Shapiro do, do do research on, like, every person in the audience? A bad. Yeah, that happened famously when I was on BBC. I had no idea who the guy was who was interviewing me, and I completely... For him, it, BBC is big black cock. For Ben Shapiro, the BB BBC is big black cock. For all conservative men, for the most part, BBC is big black cock. That, 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 that's what it is for these people. Misinterpreted exactly what he was doing and who he was, and it didn't end up well for me. You really have to research who it is that you're talking to if you hope to have a chance of, of fairly debating it. I'm going to try not to counter, like, every single thing he says, but Ben... None of your debates go well for you. Like, the only reason why your debates go well for you, why you think they go well for you, is because you rig them in your favor. Like, the debate between him and Anna Kasparian, Anna Kasparian kicked his ass. And this was with a moderator who clearly favored Ben Shapiro and an audience who clearly favored Ben Shapiro's points. Because it was an audience full of conservatives. Um, I'm eating a macaroni and cheese bowl um, with um, Grippo's sprinkled in. Oh yeah, the Anna Ben debate was pretty good. It was pretty good. Yeah, it was like back in September. Back in September or like October, something like that. Yeah, I think it might have been September. But it was really good. I liked it. That was a fun, that was a fun watch. Number three, you have to disarm your opponents of most unfair tactics. So very often in debate, people who debate like to use one or two. You mean like yours? You mean, you mean like yours? Yeah, she, it, it, the debate made her, made Anna look really good. Like, I fell in love with Anna after that debate. Like, I was like, Anna, please. <laughs> Just kidding. But no, I really do like Anna Kasparian. She's great. But... Yeah, that debate made her look very well. They made her look very exceptional. Yeah, he uses so... That is true. Ben uses so many fucking logical fallacies. Yeah, I was about to say that. Like, he uses so many fucking logical fallacies all the fucking time. Two key tactics. The, the biggest tactic they like to use, generally, is going after character. The idea being, if you disagree with them, then you're a racist, you're a sexist, you're a bigot, you're a homophobe. And this is one that's... Okay, okay. I hate these... I hate this argument. Because it's so simple and it's so devoid of any sort of context and it's so fucking vague. Yeah, if you disagree with if I disagree with you, you're just gonna call me racist. Yeah, because I said black people are people and you said no. I said Mexican people are people and you said I disagree. What the fuck else am I supposed to call you? <laughs> A charitable citizen? <laughs> what the fuck else am I supposed to call you at that point? Like, people are like, you call everyone a Nazi who disagrees with you. And I'm like, well, I think Jewish people are people. So if you don't think that, if you disagree with me, don't know what else you want me to call you. <laughs> oh, my God. A lot of ad hom and slippery slope is generally the most he uses from, uh, from my observation. Yeah, that true, true, true. He doesn't use a lot of ad hom. He just uses very bad arguments. He just uses very bad arguments and, like, relies on, like, being in, like, a group setting. Excuse me. Where, like, the moderator or host or whoever um, that, that's, ha that's having him there is, like, 
like heavily biased in his favor. It's really off putting and difficult to deal with because you think to yourself, if you're a good person, well, am I like, what did I do wrong? But that is not actually what's going on. The person doesn't actually have questions about your character. If they did, they wouldn't be on stage with you. The real reason the person is having a debate with you and is using that tactic is in order to avoid discussing the facts. And so the first thing that you have to do if somebody is going to use an unfair tactic, like it. Yeah, and he, and he thinks there's opinion there. The, the, the right always does that. The right always does that. Right-leaning people will always do this. They will state their opinion and say that it is a fact. Even though you can probably think of in the top from like just off the top of your head, like three articles automatically that you could find like that that disproved everything they just said. Like, I know that technically, if you do digging and if you type the right thing in Google, you can basically find anything to like for like confirmation bias reasons. But I'm sorry. If I can find something that disproves what you say, there's a very good chance that what you said is factually incorrect. Actually. Factually incorrect. But they always do this. Right-wingers always fucking do this shit. They say, this is a fact. They say shit like, this is a fact. Women are just weaker than men. This is a fact. <laughs> like, or women are inferior to men. This is a fact. You can't, you can't, you can't uh, go against this. Uh, women, men cannot nurture children. Women, only women can nurture children. This is a fact. This is a fact. Prager U moment. True. Prager U. Prager U is a very good example. They literally commit microaggressions in their fucking video, especially their Prager U kids videos. All those kids do is go back in time and commit microaggressions. That's all they fucking do. That's all they fucking do, yo. They just go back in time and commit microaggressions. <laughs> they go back in time and commit microaggressions to very whitewashed versions. Very, very whitewashed versions of even white people, okay? Like, it, you know it's bad when you whitewashed fucking white people. <laughs> Prager you whitewashes white people, and that's saying something. That's bad. That's really fucking bad. But it's true. I know it. You know it. Attacking your character is saying right from the outset, listen, I know that it's easy enough to attack character, and we can do that all day. I'm happy to attack your character. I'm sure you're happy to attack mine. What would be amazing is if we could stop that right at the outset and instead just discuss the fact. Instead of questioning my motivations, I don't question yours. You don't question mine. But see, here's the thing, though. This is another one of those, like, right-wing slippery slopes, right? Like, he'll say, oh, they just attack your character. Yeah, because you probably looked at a trans person or a gay person and said that they were not valid for being gay or trans. Or that they're subhuman. Or that they need to be in a ditch or some shit. Like, maybe not those words verbatim. But in many cases, these people say shit that's similar to that, right? And they go, oh, you're using, you're using an ad hominem. And it's like, they all, they're the first ones to call to say you're using an ad hom after they have, after they have like, literally just 1350 viewers and shit. Which, like, there is no excuse at this point to 1350 anybody. Especially considering considering the ways in which, like, how many times 1350 has been widely debunked. Like, there's no reason to 1350 people. But, like, you still do it. It's a far-right talking point. Far-right neo-Nazi talking point. I'm gonna fucking clown on your shit. I do like his shirt, though. His shirt is nice. And we can move on. I most famously did this with Piers Morgan. Piers had been using this tactic repeatedly in gun control debates where he would say that if you disagreed with him about gun control, it's simply because you didn't care enough about children. And right from the outset of the debate, I said, listen, Piers, I, I basically think that's a smear tactic. And I th Whoa. Children, Is it just me? Right from the outset of the debate, I said, listen, or does Piers, he I My God, how old was he here? He looks like he's fucking 12. Was he 12? Holy shit, dude. I can tell it's Ben Shapiro, but like... I'm sorry, there's a decent difference between those two. For one, he looks angrier at this age. He looks angrier at this age. Like, he's just always angry because he's older. Was he, was he in middle school? 
Yeah. The outset of the debate, I said, listen, Pierre, I basically think that's a smear tactic, and I think you're wrong to do it. I think it's kind of gross that you do that. And it took the, the tactic completely out of the debate. What you do, and I've seen it repeatedly on your show, I watch your show, um, and I've seen it repeatedly, what you tend to do is you tend to demonize people who differ from you politically by standing on the graves of the children of Sandy Hook, saying they don't seem to care enough about the dead kids. If they cared more about the dead kids, they would agree with you on policy. I think we can have a rational political conversation about balancing rights and risks. Wait, wait, no, no, no. But, like, the guy he's talking to, I, I forgot it already because I'm so fucking tired. He's correct, though. Like, I really do feel that way. I, 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 exp I express that sentiment. Like, if whenever we talk about gun control and we, and we bring up, like, you know, that we need to protect children and keep, and stop schools from getting shot up and shit. And then you start talking about, like, the Second Amendment or some other fucking shit. Like, or, or, or you start, you start going off about, like, oh, they're trying to take my guns. And it's like, no, my God. We just want to talk about what we can do about guns to make it to where school shootings happen less. And these people will go, well, give every gun, every, give every, every person a gun. <laughs> there are people who believe that you should give everybody a nuke, okay? Don't, don't think I'm crazy for this, for, for mentioning this. This is real shit that happens, that I've, that I've, that I've, talked, I've uh, talked about and heard talked about. Okay? Like, if you respond, if you see school shootings happen, and you respond like, oh, you're trying to take my guns and shit like that, like, and you don't, you don't talk about, you, you, you just don't care? Oh, a small price to pay for freedom, brother. And it's like, I don't think you care about kids. Think about it this way conservatives excuse me sorry Ex uh, conservatives are more likely conservatives care more about their guns than they do their own fucking children conservatives are more likely to throw their children out for being gay than they are to actually talk about gun control gun control and gun legislation so that their kid doesn't get shot in fucking school conservatives care more about their guns than they do their children i'm just saying risks and rewards of all of these different policies but i don't think that what we need to do hi this is governor ron DeSantis. we are fighting the good fight in the state of florida and the left and the corporate media do not like that one bit they are coming at us every single day what the fuck? lying trying to do misdirection trying to divide uh, because they know I hate him so much. I know this is an ad, but I hate Ron to Satan so much. Ron to fascist so much. I fucking hate him. Oh, that we've succeeded. He always sounds and looks like he's angry. In Florida, and they'll do anything they can. Is demonize people on the other side as, as being unfeeling. The minute that Pierce did that, I would say. I told you, Piers, it's an unfair tactic, and you really shouldn't be doing it, and it's pretty ugly, and it makes you a worse person to use those kinds of tactics. Four. You know, I really like Red Hood, because Red Hood is not afraid to, like, pop a cap in a motherfucker. I want to see, like, comics where he, like, murders political officials. I'm pretty sure he's done that, like, multiple times. But, like, I want to see a comic, a comic where he, like, assassinates a bad president. Like, just shoots him. I want to see that. Fourth, you got to frame the terms of the debate. So very often when you're debating somebody or even discussing an issue with somebody, the terms of the debate have already been framed in a way where you are just not going to win the debate. Most commonly, this happens in the media. You'll hear media members ask questions famously. They're sort of like, Senator, when did you... Wait. That's you. Yeah, every president, basically, yeah. Like, Ben, that's what you guys do. That's literally how you got famous, bro. You did that shit. I love it when he lies to himself. Stop. 
eating your wife. Okay, the way that question is framed means there is no good answer, right? Senator, when did you stop eating your wife? Assumes, of course, that you started beating your wife. In you could say, I never beat my wife. I mean... But see, the, the right only appears to win when they frame, when they can frame the debate in specific ways. This is the shit they put, this, is this not the shit that they pull with Katanji Brown Jackson in her hear, in her, in her hearing? I'm fairly certain it was. In the first place. Well, when it comes to virtually any issue, folks who you're debating are going to attempt to frame the debate in the worst possible terms for you. So they'll say things like, well, don't you think that Black Lives Matter if you're talking about, for example, whether systemic racism exists in policing? And the answer is, of course, I, I believe that black lives matter. Everyone agrees that black lives matter. I think that all black lives matter, which is why I think it's imperative that the police oh my God. be in these areas. So oh, oh my God. He's not even... He, 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 he's so fucking stupid. You, one of, you, want, you, don't want to know, you want to know some of the reasons why I hate evaluating right-wing media and why, why, why I have this love-hate relationship with, 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 with uh, evaluating right-wing right -wing media? It's because... So many times, the right will easily stun lock you. And they'll say some dumb shit that's so inherently stupid, you can't respond to it. You can't think of an actual good counter argument to it. And you're just sitting there like, because they said something stupid! And again, you assume good motivations. Like, let's assume good motivations. You always have to ask for. You know, a certain level of specificity when you frame the terms... Of also, he's using, like, the worst examples, low-key. And you have to make sure that the right questions are being asked. And, and very typically, that is not what happens in debate. Usually, people are attempting to ask a question that is wildly off-topic. Right. From your side. This is y'all's behavior. The rest of us don't do this shit. This is y'all. Not us. Fuck you! attempt to sort of corner you into a point that you don't want to make. Fifth, you got to know what you know, and you got to know what you don't. So this is actually a lesson that I learned in non-debate scenario. I was... I feel like this is a Jordan Peterson prompt. This seems like some shit Jordan Peterson would say. Doing but like him and Ben... ...with somebody, and they mentioned a publication that I... Him and Shappy are friends, so whatever. Oh, I accidentally put it full screen. Oh, well. We had no idea what it was. Now Ben Shapiro's closer to you, and you have to deal with that. Lick his face. <laughs> and they said, have you heard of it? I said, sure. And then they asked me a specific question. I, of course, had no idea what they were talking about. I looked kind of foolish. Well, you got to know what you know and know what you don't. Very often in debates, people are going to throw facts and figures at Benny, what the fuck do you mean by that, bro? <laughs> like, like, what the fuck do you mean by that? You may not know them, and the facts and the figures may in fact be correct. And the answer to that is, I didn't know that. I'm happy to look it up, and I'll get back to you. Here are some of my facts and figures, and, you know, I think that after I look it up, I'd be happy to discuss that, but you can't ask me to discuss something that I really don't know about. That is not an unfair response. That is a perfectly... But, like, doesn't he do this exact thing? Like, again, like, everything he talks about in this shit is shit that he does! Fair response. And to simply say that is okay. You're allowed to do that. It also allows you to know where you're on safer ground, what you've really studied, and what you have not. Sixth, you got to defend ideas, not individuals. So these days, this is a really big one, because obviously the only political figure who matters in American life is President Trump, and every debate turns into orange man bad. If you're a conservative, aren't you really team Trump? When he does something that I like, I cheer, and when he does something that I hate, which happens, then I boo, and I'm booing as loudly as you are when he does something that's really bad. But listen... Bro, that's cap. That's straight cap. Straight cap. Rule one, don't debate liberals. True. True. We are lefties here. We don't fucking debate liberals. Fuck them. All right? Liberals are so fucking annoying. You want to know why liberals are so fucking annoying? Because they always act as though they are, like, morally superior to you. In, like, every way. They're like, oh... You lefties are going at things all, all too fast. You're too fast with what with, with, with what you're demanding and everything. It's like no, this is shit that should have been happening. That should that, sh that should have been happening like eons ago. Everyone else in the in the developed world has got on with this shit. 
but except for America. Yeah, neoliberals. Neoliberals are the fucking worst. Like, libertarians, the fucking worst, dude. Don't fucking talk to or debate those people. Honestly, no offense, I think wait, I think debate is honestly a waste of fucking time, even though I do it. And I do it especially when I'm, like, bored or whatever. Like, like there are times where I'll go up where I'll be like, you know what? I feel like pissing off a right winger on TikTok. Let me, like, I, I, there are some days when I wake up and I go, I want to get in trouble. I want to start a fight. <laughs> like, like, there are some days where I wake up like that. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. But, like, honestly, it's a waste of fucking time. And then you'll have some other people that are like, oh, well, you have, excuse me, we have to debate. Because if we don't, everyone's going to become a right winger. And it's like, no. The fuck they aren't. And no, we're not going to become, everyone's not going to become a fucking right winger. And we don't have to debate people. We don't have to. We don't. I'm sorry. I'm not saying that you shouldn't do it. I'm just saying that, I'm just giving my opinion. My opinion is, debate is a fucking waste of time. It is a colossal fucking waste of time. Even the people that are, like, really good at debate, I feel like, never leave, like, Bosch and other people, like, they never leave the debate thinking that, for the most part, that was, like, a good, solid use of their time. I feel like you're very upset about the Supreme Court nominee. I am very pleased about the Supreme Court nominee as a conservative, right? He's doing a lot of things that I like in terms of policy. Now, that doesn't mean that I am cheering his character because I think that it is very difficult to cheer Donald Trump's character, nor do I think it's appropriate. Now, the truth is that was not unique to Trump. That goes all the way back to George W. Bush. I remember back in the Bush days when I would do debates, virtually every debate would turn into, so you think that, that terrible George W. Bush, that terrible George W. Bush is X, Y, or Z? And the answer was, I don't understand what this has to do with Bush. Well, Trump is used as the same sort of misdirect tactic. Now, you can defend all the ideas you want to defend. You don't have to defend President Trump's behavior. You don't have to defend things that he, unless you actually agree with him. If you agree with him, then defend him. But what people very often seek to do is avoid discussing the ideas and instead try to staple you to the pant leg of some politician or other who you may not agree with 100% of the time. Only defend the thing. But what if the debate is about the politician, though? Like, that often happens. Debates oftentimes, like, are not, it's not uncommon for a debate to literally be about a politician or a political figure. Like, we can't just act like, oh, we don't, we don't need to talk about their character, even though in many cases these people represent us to the rest of the fucking world. Things that you want to defend, don't defend individuals if you don't agree with the individual. Seven, you gotta demand clarification of terms. So as I mentioned earlier, one of the tactics that folks on the political left like to use is they use they, they really like using semantic overload. So to use the example of Black Lives Matter again. What? Dude, no we don't. Literally, I have yet to see lefties get into semantical arguments. It's probably happened. But and I, I'm like I'm not saying it doesn't. But like I've watched many a debate, okay? And Nine times out of ten, um, yeah, you can, you can, you can vent. You can, we also have a Discord if you want to scroll up and chat. I think you might still be able to find the Discord link. Um, we are a safe space where people can come to vent as well. Um, that is fine. Um, and thank you for coming into the stream as a first time viewer. Thank you so much. Um, where was I? I get distracted so easy, and I'm so fucking tired. Um, oh yeah, whenever I see somebody talking about a semantical argument, like, or, or making an argument about semantics, nine times, nine point seven times out of ten, it's the fucking right. Like, it's people like fucking Ben that make, some, hold on, sorry, people like fucking Ben that make semantical arguments. Not us. We don't fucking do that shit. Black Lives Matter means three separate things. It means one, that Black Lives Matter, which is absolutely inarguable. Of course Black Lives Matter, because every life matters, and it would be insane to argue otherwise. So that is term number one. They always say this with Black Lives Matter too. Well, well Black Lives Matter, of course, they, 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 they matter. Except for when they, the police has decided that, oh my God, I <laughs> Quick, somebody clip this, this is so funny. Look at his face. Oh my God, look at his face.
Look at his face, yo! Oh my god! It's funny! <laughs> but nine times out of ten, there's always like a but after like the whole, yeah, I, I think Black Lives Matter, but, uh, you know, uh, hypothetically, hypothetically speaking, um, if black lives were to matter, then the cops would decide not to kill the black people. So, uh, technically, the, uh, hypothetically speaking, if the black if, if if black lives actually did matter, then cops wouldn't kill them. <laughs> and we all agree. Two, black lives matter could mean the actual organization Black Lives Matter, which is a neo-Marxist awful movement. And number three, Black Lives Matter could mean America is systemically racist. The this is why we gotta watch what we say around these fucking clowns. The, the 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 founders of Black Lives Matter said they were trained Marxists, and literally the right has not been able to fucking handle it. Police are systemically racist, and therefore we need to scale back the police in order to fight that systemic racism. You know what people on the left love to do is they love to say Black Lives Matter, agree or disagree. And what you have to do is then go through the taxonomy that I just articulated. You have to say it depends. What do you mean by that? Bro, this dude is such a fucking joke. It's so funny. I think we're going to do some more Ben Shapiro tomorrow. And I know that you may think you know what you mean by that, but I actually want to just clarify so that we can you know, make sure that we're talking about exactly the same thing. Otherwise, you get dragged into all these sort of Mott and Bailey arguments where you'll say, well, you know, black lives matter, all lives matter. And the person says, are you saying... They always do this shit, bro. Every chance conservatives get, they will shit on BLM. Every single chance they get. Black lives don't matter. It's like, well, no, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that if your argument is against the police, they say, well, that's not what I was arguing in the first place. This sort of stuff happens all the time. The left will use terms that have very little specific meaning, like systemic racism. Okay, what do you mean? Do you mean like an actual institution that has an actual legal rule that is racist? Because that we all agree is bad. Or do you mean that all inequality can be chalked up to inequity, which is not correct? But you have to be very clear about terminology. It's still a lawyer thing, but it's also a. Well. Not necessarily, but a very, 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 very good chunk of inequity, a very good chunk of inequality can be, wait, wait, hold on. What did he say? Free is bad. Or do you mean that all inequality can be chalked up to inequity, which is not correct? Correct me if I'm wrong, but aren't inequality and inequity the same fucking thing? My cat's playing. The nigga was too stunned to speak. But you have to be very clear about terminology. It's just a lawyer thing, but it's also a debate thing. And it's true across the board. When people say, don't you believe in immigration reform? You have to ask, okay, what do you mean by immigration reform so we can be more exact and meticulous in our argument? Okay, finally, you have to argue from fundamental principles. So the arguments that make the most... But did you see what just happened there? Ben Shapiro said something that was so blatantly stupid, it stunlocked me. It made me stupid. It made me stupid are not the arguments over facts and statistics. It's about fundamental principles. And really true, interesting political debate is over those fundamental principles and how we value those fundamental principles. The biggest debate in the country, for example, right now, is about the future of the country and how America should be defined. I have a book, How to Destroy America, in three easy steps, where I think that there are two basic visions of the country, one rooted in the fundamental principles of the Declaration of Independence, the idea that natural rights pre-exist government, the idea of equal treatment before the law, the, the basic idea that government is instituted to protect rights and not invade them, Right, those are fundamental principles, and we should determine whether we are arguing on the surface over the ramifications of the same principle, or whether we are arguing about the fundamental principles themselves. So, for example, I've argued that the right to free speech is good. There are many people who argue the right to free speech is not necessarily good, because there are a lot of people who misuse speech in order to abuse other people. Yes, Ben Shapiro, that's the argument. <laughs> and it's true. Like, sorry, I'm not one for free speech. Or at least, you know what? Free speech, yeah, fine, do it. You can have your free speech. But I also have my free speech, and I also got my free hands. 
you can get these hands. You don't even have to pay shipping. <laughs> they will fit and they will ship and they will knock the shit out of you. Well, that is a fundamental principle argument and one worth having. But very often people ignore the fundamental principles to argue about things that are happening kind of on the surface, like particular uses of free speech. I can agree with you fully that somebody has misused free speech and been a jerk. Is it not important to argue or to talk about and discuss the issues with these kinds of things? I'm lost. I'm so fucking lost. Yeah, I don't like the government necessarily suppressing voices because usually whenever the government gets some type of power like that where they can do that, it can it was it is almost always misused. Like almost every fucking time. <laughs> that does not mean that the fundamental principle of freedom of speech should be at issue. So arguing fundamental principles is really key. And it's the stuff But the thing is the only people that ever bitch about free speech are white people that just want to fucking say the N word. That's literally it. It would be way too authoritarian. Yeah, true. That really matters most in the end. Well, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it will help you in your future rhetorical endeavors. If you liked what you heard, it wouldn't. The rest of our videos on YouTube. Anyways, uh, I love you guys. Thanks for watching. I'm actually tired. I'm falling asleep right now. Uh, we'll be back. <laughs> this is what happens when you when you don't go to bed until 4, 4 a.m. Uh, and you're talking to dumb people on the internet. We'll be back tomorrow. Tomorrow, most likely tomorrow morning. Please come. Yay.